Hello and welcome back to our video series where we are going through the textbook Lead Green Associate Exam Preparation Guide and just give a brief overview of the chapters. So in this video, it is chapter six and that is all about sustainable sites. So the objectives of the chapter are to identify site assessment strategies, describe site design and management strategies, describe rainwater management strategies, explain how to reduce the heat island effect of a building and the building site, and identify strategies used to reduce light pollution. So this is a very important chapter, and this is one of the credit categories, uh, sustainable sites. So the goal of this um, category is to reduce the environmental impact of developing a building site and maintaining it for the life of the building. So environmental impacts can be considered by examining how a new building site can affect the environment through the construction and the lifetime of the building. So let us go through uh, a few important moments here. So site design and management and the sustainable site category encourages responsible site design and management because a building and its site can have a large impact on the environment. So for example, if there is a wildlife habitat that can be damaged or destroyed when the land is cleared for construction and that can also, that land can also be um, exposed to soil erosion. Uh, so site design and management intends the site design um, and the credits of the sustainable site category are critical for reducing the environmental impact of a building site. And the intent is to guide the construction and management of the project throughout its lifetime to limit the environmental destruction inherent to building. Another intent of these credits is to make use of existing site features to enhance overall sustainability and occupant experience. As far as the <clears throat> other site design and management strategies, uh, it is important to understand that uh, part of the project surroundings and public outreach knowledge domain concerning regional design is emphasized in the sustainable site category strategies. So, and that is pollution prevention, protection and restoration of habitat, reducing the size of building footprint, increasing density, maximizing open spaces, planting native and adapted plant species, and developing a sustainable site management plan. So um, there is a lot of information here and I highly encourage you to go through the textbook and look all the graphics and images because they will definitely help you understand the credit categories. So um, the uh, first step for new building construction on the greenfield area is to prepare the grade for the foundation by bulldozing the land. And actually that uh, damages the habitats and many animals and insects and plants um, just will have to go and um, those were supporting biodiversity. So in uh, here, we need to understand that the preference of course goes to the uh, sites that were already uh, established or damaged or developed. So Greenfield is highly undesirable place to build according to the uh, lead um, and also in general, like green building uh, certification and just the common sense. So, um, Protect and Restore Habitat is the sustainable site credit. And uh, that encourages project teams to designate areas as protected habitat and open space for the life of the project. Then um, reduce size of building footprint. 
the building footprint is the perimeter of a building as it meets the land on which it occupies. The strategy of reducing the size of the building footprint is important for cost savings and reduction of environmental impact throughout all aspects of the project. Increase site density. So when you do that, that is an important strategy to achieve a smaller building footprint without cutting square feet. Uh, but uh, you definitely need to check the floor to area ratio, and that is the requirement. You need to check with your local jurisdictions because there are some restrictions, but it's usually a good idea to maximize it and just uh, build it up uh, and reduce the building footprint. So uh, when we talk about uh, maximizing open space, uh, that's another credit and that requires project teams to provide outdoor space greater than or equal to 30% of the total site area. And the intent is to create exterior open space that encourages interaction with the environment, social interaction, passive recreation, and physical activities. So when you uh, plant native and adapted species, that also uh, is very helpful. And uh, when um, no water or pesticides are required, that definitely uh, will benefit the site and the surroundings. So like the uh, considerations are aspects of the regional design part of the project surroundings and public outreach knowledge domain. Um, also, yes, please check the uh, textbook. You will see a lot of information there with all the graphics. <clears throat> so, um, develop sustainable site management plan. That is a prerequisite for the lead O&M or operations and maintenance and existing building rating system um, is sustainable site prerequisite site management policy. So in order to fulfill this requirement, projects must have a sustainable site management policy that addresses all chemicals used on the site cleaning of hardscape and the building um, exterior and pesticide management. So the uh, intent of this prerequisite is to preserve ecological integrity and encourage environmentally sensitive site management practices that provide a clean, well-maintained and safe building exterior while supporting high performance building operations and integration into the surrounding landscape. Rainwater management. So this is critically important for this credit category as well. And that is the uh, credit, the rainwater management that is aimed to reduce rainwater runoff and improve water quality by duplicating the natural hydrology and water balance of the site based on historical conditions and undeveloped ecosystems in the region. And also rainwater can be captured or harvested to reduce the building's potable water use. So as far as the rainwater management strategies, um, there are two steps to approach rainwater management that can be used uh, to earn points in this credit category. The first is to reduce the amount of impervious areas or hardscape that cause excessive run, uh, rainwater runoff. The second step is to manage runoff by using green infrastructure and low impact development techniques. So um, when you reduce the impervious hardscape, uh, there are many ways to do that. So the most popular choice is uh, the uh, pervious surface for rooftops, uh, and that is the green or vegetated roof. 
So, but uh, for in order to do that, uh, there should be a few considerations such as structural support so that roof is properly installed, as well as the slope of the roof cannot be more than 45 degrees in order uh, for that um, uh, vegetation to stay there. So when you implement the uh, rainwater management, uh, you can harvest the rainwater or collect it. And that can be reused for irrigation, process water or flush fixtures inside the building. So that can be used to uh, flush the toilets and also use the uh, dripping irrigation. Uh, the passive rainwater management is actually um, uh, directing rainwater to planted areas where it is allowed to saturate the soil. And that is also a very successful strategy that, that can um, actually drain the water back into the earth. And that's fundamental to the rainwater management and that is a passive system. And yes, please check all the diagrams here because they actually show um, dry ponds, bioswales, and other important uh, things here. Uh, when we talk about heat island effect, uh, the heat island is an increase in microclimate temperatures created by waste heat from human activity, building operations, and surfaces in the built environment that absorb sunlight. So, and you know that dark surfaces such as like hardscape or asphalt, uh, they attract more heat and the temperature rises. So the uh, intent of the uh, sustainable sites uh, credit heat island reduction aims to reduce the problems caused by heat islands, which occur mostly in urban areas due to the abundance of constructed surfaces. So you uh, can do a few things. You can reduce exposed hardscapes, and that is by installing green roofs or using open grid paving or providing shade for the hardscapes using trees, foliage, landscaping or other structures and locating parking on the ground. And also use high reflectance materials. So the when you pave these surfaces with high solar reflectance um, index or SRI, that reduces heat absorption from the sun. So and um, usually there are uh, charts where you can check the SRI when you specify the. Um, surface, uh, like the roof surface or the parking or anything like that. Light pollution. So uh, light pollution prevention, right, light pollution reduction is another sustainable site credit and that encourages project teams to reduce the problems caused by light pollution. So we know that smart lighting design can reduce light trespass significantly and includes um, a few strategies. So we can, what we can do is we can install motion sensors and timers. We can eliminate unnecessary lighting. We can also use uh, different light fixtures and that will definitely uh, help reducing the um, lighting pollution. There are a few uh, terms and definitions that are really important to understand the um, sustainable sites category. Albedo. Albedo is a metric to define the reflectivity of an object from darkest black to white using a scale from zero to one. Aquifer. It is a body of saturated rock through which water can easily move. Biodiversity. The variety of all life on Earth, including plants, animal, insects, microorganisms, and humans. Bioswale. A constructed rainwater control feature containing an engineered basin soil, stone, and vegetation designed to reduce rainwater runoff and increase groundwater recharge. 
building footprint. The area of ground that the building occupies as defined by its perimeter. Dry pond. An excavated area designed to hold rainwater during a rain event, but is dry when there is no precipitation. Ecosystem. A complex set of interconnected relationships between the living organisms of a specific place that form a system, including plants, trees, animals, fish, birds, microorganisms, water, soil, and humans. Floor area ratio, or FAR. The density of non-residential land use exclusive of structured parking measured as the total non-residential building floor area divided by the total buildable land area available for non-residential structures. Green infrastructure, or GI. The patchwork of natural areas that provide habitat, flood protection, clean air, and clean water at the scale of a city or county, or rainwater management systems that mimic nature by soaking up and storing water at the scale of a neighborhood or site. Heat island effect. The absorption of solar heat by hardscapes such as roofs, roads, parking lots, sidewalks, and includes other sources such as automobiles, HVAC equipment, and street and building lighting. Impervious. The characteristic of a material preventing the penetration of liquids and or gases. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. A sustainable approach of controlling pest infestation and damage in an economical way while minimizing hazards to people, property, and the environment. Light trespass. The spillage of light across a project boundary onto neighboring sites. Low impact development, or LID. A land management strategy that emulates natural systems to manage rainwater as close to its source as possible. Native and adapted species. Plants that are either native to the region or have adapted to the region and require little to no irrigation. Non-point source pollution. Water pollution caused by pollutants such as gasoline, oil, salt, and fertilizers which are washed into the nearest water bodies by rainwater runoff. Purvis, the characteristic of a material allowing the penetration of liquids and or gases. Rain garden, a depressed area of ground containing soil, stone, and vegetation that is designed to catch and slow rainwater. Rainwater harvesting or rainwater collection. Precipitation captured with a cistern or other, uh, other catchment device from outside the building for use in irrigation, flush fixtures, or building processes, but not for potable uses. Rainwater runoff. Water from precipitation that runs off of impervious hardscapes in the built environment such as sidewalks, roof, and parking lots into the nearest water bodies and sewer systems. Solar Reflectance Index, or SRI, a metric from 0 to 100 that measures how well a material reflects solar heat with higher numbers signifying better reflectance. Watershed, the area of land where all of the water that is under it or drains off of it goes to the same place. Xeriscaping, landscaping designed to reduce or eliminate potable water use in irrigation through the planting of native and adapted species of vegetation and the use of other water conserving techniques. And this wraps up our chapter six. I will see you in chapter seven. Thank you.